People who have done a multi-day hiking trip, such as the Appalachian Trail. What is your horror story from the trip? Night 1 of a trip at Sleeping Giant in Canada, I believe. First night out, I'm always a little jumpy because it takes a while to get used to the sound of the woods. And this was no exception. It was a solo trip, so just me in a little tent on the edge of the forest, looking out onto a small slope down onto a pebble beach. I was having some real trouble getting to sleep. The woods were just so loud and my mind kept jumping to serial killer instead of normal wildlife. I was trying to convince myself otherwise when I hear some heavier footsteps. Breaking twigs. My heart is in my throat because I just know I'm going to die all alone in the Canadian backwoods. Then I hear a crash and some falling rocks directly outside my tent. And I work up the courage to turn on my flashlight and unzip the door to have a look. At which point I catch a glimpse of the very clumsy woodland elk that had just fallen down the slope onto the beach right in front of me. Didn't die. Comma didn't die. Thanks for the clarification. Great dividing range in Australia. Doing it in summer. So we didn't take tents. Just slept in sleeping bags in the open. Under the stars. We had tent flies with us in case it rained. Gorgeous. Except for the one night when we camped near a huge infestation of caterpillars. Fuzzy hairy ones. Spent the whole night half asleep. And peeling tickly fuzzy things off my face. I was on a canoe camping trip. On a long narrow lake. My wife and I had set up camp about halfway along the lake. And all was well. After dark I went to wash my face in the lake. And I see two lights on the other side of the lake. It was only like 50 meters wide. As I'm watching. Their headlamps fade and die, and then something big starting snorting over there. A moose or a bear? It was pretty loud. It was a still night, and so I called out to them. Hey are you alright? It turns out they had accidentally started hiking from the wrong parking lot, delaying them an hour or two. And then when they got to the lake, they had hiked down the wrong side of the lake. So I offered, and then went and picked them up in my canoe, and lent them a flashlight so they could set up. I think they were pretty relieved to have gotten away from whatever animal that was. If I hadn't been there, that would have had hours of hiking to get to the next campsite. Without lamps. Of it was snorting it was probably a bear. I've never heard a moose snort. That typically have a long moan. Or short bark like calls. To be honest, depending on the type of bear, they were probably lucky it was a bear. A moose will frick you up. Not hiking but kayaking. My father and I took a multi-day kayaking trip on Yellowstone Lake. He totally underestimated how far away the campsites were over water and what we thought would be a 3 hour kayak trip was a 8 hour kayak trip. Got there and set up camp and enjoyed it but we were supposed to leave to another site the next day. That didn't happen. A storm that wasn't on the forecast rolled in and we ended up, quite literally, holding the tent from blowing away. We used every ounce of rope. Thankfully dad always packed extra to tie it down and we still ended up holding the rods from inside the tent. The third day it let up a bit and we realized we had to get the heck out. That was almost worse. We had to kayak back. About half through the weather went bad and we were fighting against the wind and rain. Took 10 hours to get back fighting against white water on a dang lake. I was 15 and I was exhausted, cranky, and so sore I didn't move from the car the next day. LOL. Oh, and no cell phone reception. You are lucky. Some boy scouts got caught in bad weather and canoes on Yellowstone Lake. Several drowned. Day 3 of 5 was at a waterfall. There were a few large flat rocks maybe 500 feet from the base of the falls that were large enough to fit a tent. So that's what me and my tent mate did. It rained that evening. The rock we pitched on was raised from the surrounding river by a few feet when we set up camp but the river quickly swelled once the rain started. To complicate things, the wind coming off the falls was pushing the falls facing wall of the tent in by about a foot or so and rain was pouring horizontally through the space where the two zippers meet. At one point during the storm, I stepped out with the intent of moving our packs to higher ground and while I was doing so my tent mate decided to get a look at the situation as well. Well. As soon as he stepped out, the tent instantly caught a gust of wind and was swallowed by the river, sleeping bags and all. Lucky for us there were a few solo guys in our group with extra room in their tents, 
but sleeping in a cramped 1.5 person tent with no sleeping bag or pads is not a fun experience in the least. The following morning we were able to fish our tent and lost gear off the river rocks below. The tent was a complete loss as both the rods were snapped in multiple sections and our sleeping bags and gear were waterlogged. We had to hit the trail though in order to make it to our next destination by nightfall so we had no choice but to pack everything up and hike with all the extra weight. Somehow, we made it to our destination shortly after lunch and were blessed with a sunny grassy clearing and an awesome dude in our party who thought to bring rope so we could string a clothesline and dry out our gear before the evening. I learned a few valuable lessons on that trip. 1. Don't camp in the middle of a river. 2. Lash your tent down. 3. Bring rope because it's just handy to have. 4. The other people in your party might have to save your dumb butt one day so be humble. 5. Get a camp towel. A full size terry cloth beach towel is like 20 pounds when soaking wet and I would have done anything to yeet that thing off the side of a cliff if I had been a littering butthole. All good lessons. Hard learned. One day, fresh out of college with no friends in the area, I hiked a rough, and marked herding trail in the mountains I was somewhat familiar with on a hot August day by myself. It followed along a beautiful stream lined with spruce trees and tall grass along the banks. Very picturesque. It was a designated wilderness area with few official recreational trails nearby. However, because it was in the tall grass and I wore pants worried about ticks, I got hot really fast. Sweating up a storm, I came to a nice bend in the river way out in no man's land. I stopped at this point and decided that river was looking extra inviting so I stripped down to nothing and waded into the water. Wasn't worried about anyone stumbling upon me as no one really knew about this trail. The water was ice cold, and deeper than I thought, but totally worth it. After cooling down sufficiently, I decided to go see what was around that river bend. Wading through the water at chest depth, I was relatively silent. Got closer to the bend and peered around the corner slowly, saw more spruce trees, a rock, then another small spruce tree, and next to that a giant bull moose in the water, having a nice drink. I froze. He was less than 50 feet from me, and he didn't know I was there because I was so silent, trying my hardest not to make a sound while also panicking. I slowly but quickly turned around in the water and rushed back to shore trying not to make a sound. Except every time I exhaled, I said I don't wanna die under my breath for some reason. I think it was a slight panic attack as I was alone deep in the woods naked in the water with a bull moose. I got back to shore, gathered my clothes, and ran totally naked through the woods for quite a distance before stopping to at least put shoes and underwear on. Continued running until I got out of the woods and back to my car and sat there until the shaking stopped and I could drive home. TL. DR. I accidentally went skinny dipping with a bull moose in the middle of the wilderness. Fun fact, moose can dive 20 feet underwater. One of my deepest fears is a moose surfacing right beside me in the water. Hiked 50 miles of the Appalachian Trail with some friends after graduating high school. We did 12 miles a day for 4 days. Took us pretty much all day each day to get all 12 miles done. Except for the last day. I woke up with the worst diarrhea of my life. Shat my brains out thoroughly at sunrise. We hiked those last 12 miles before lunch. Also, 3 out of the 4 of us found deer ticks. We thought the 4th guy was quite lucky. Turns out he also had a deer tick but he just didn't find it. The poor guy got Lyme disease. Ooh sucks. That's not fun. We hiked from Deep Gap to Rock Gap one summer. The worst part of the trip was when someone scared the crap out of bedded down deer and one of them ran full speed into a hammock. Guy came out of it with a broke arm and ankle. Leading a youth group on a hiking trip. Lost a kid. We found him again but I don't think anything will compare to the fear of losing someone else's child. Okay, this one is truly horrifying. Most of the others. Meh, this one though gave me chills. I hiked and stayed in Zaleski State Forest in southern Ohio probably 10 years ago. I was camping with my dad, my uncle, and both cousins. Each of us had our own one person tent and slept alone and spaced roughly 20 to 30 feet from each other. This part of Ohio is extremely rural and at the time, Google Maps did not have this area mapped out so we had to follow an actual map to get to the trailhead. Also, there was no cell service, 
We had heard rumors about a nearby abandoned tunnel and that it was haunted and ended up staying in that general area the first night. Around 3am, we were all woken by this incredibly loud bang. It sounded like a car drove off a cliff. However, we were nowhere near any roads and had hiked several miles away from the trailhead. Nothing else happened that night but we just couldn't understand where a sound that loud could have come from. It definitely wasn't a tree falling. It sounded almost like an explosion of metal. I've also section hiked parts of the AT, but have yet to experience anything spooky. Went on a 12 day trip in the Bob Marshall wilderness. On day 2 we passed a mom grizzly with her cubs at about 40 yards away. Got to our next camping spot just before dark. Heard crashing in the water nearby in the middle of the night. Turns out it was a moose. Still spooky but not as bad as grizzlies. Next day found some bear sign around where we camped. On day 11 we were back to this spot as our final camping site for the trip. Saw grizzly tracks on top of our boot tracks. Easy to say we didn't sleep much that night even though we were exhausted. Not a true horror story, but felt the fear being many miles deep, with no means of contacting any help. Not that anyone can help much if a grizzly is attacking and you're so far from civilization. It was supposed to be a two night stay in the backcountry in Grand Teton National Park, with my parents. The day we hiked out, it rained the entire day and only got worse when we got to where we were camping. Everything was soaked through despite our best efforts. This was far from the first backpacking trip we'd been on, and we ended the day with sleet. I ended up wrapping myself in one of those emergency foil blankets inside my sleeping bag to get warm. We were so miserable the next morning that we threw in the towel and hiked back to civilization. In perfect weather, every single person we crossed paths with the next day was shocked we'd even bothered going out the day before. Moral of this story, if you compare your father to Ron Swanson on a regular basis, don't let him make decisions about activities if inclement weather is in the forecast. I did a week long backpacking trip trough the northern high country of Yosemite National Park. It was awesome except for that one day I went through a place called Bear Valley. It was absolutely beautiful with this creek running gently down through a meadow with flowers blooming all around. But when it was time to set up camp I found why the place was called what it was. There were bear signs everywhere. Big bear signs. Massive bear shoots and claw marks on trees almost 20 feet up. I kept walking until past nightfall. In the end I did 20 miles that day in order to get clear of the bears. Also I ran out of food, never turned back, since I was doing a loop, lost 20 pounds that trips, weighed about 220 before, weighed 197 after. A week's work of grub is a lot of food. I was carrying too much weight, I slipped in some mud and pulled a groin muscle. My wife was freaking out and didn't know what to do, and the mosquitoes were insane, making decision making difficult, so we ditched our packs under some trees. Tried to figure out where on the trail we were, hobbled 4 miles back to the car, and tried to come up with a plan. It turned out there was a county road about 1 stroke 8 of a mile from where we ditched the packs. Probably could have just flagged someone down. Jatbilla Trail, NT Australia. I headed out solo on this walk. On my 5th day I was walking along and had noticed a lot of very fresh buffalo scat and hoof prints in the sandy track that morning. There is a sizable feral water buffalo population in the northern parts of Australia. The trees were thinning out into a large plain. I was walking along in my own little world until I caught something out the corner of my eye. About 50 meters away from me I could see a water buffalo. Then I saw another. And another. I think there was about a dozen of them. I froze with fear and retreated back behind a skinny little tree thinking. Frick. Now what I knew there was a couple of hikers who had left camp after me so I thought I'd just wait for them. No matter how far behind they were. Then the herd of buffalo began to stampede. It was deafening. I wish I could describe the cacophony of all those feet hitting the ground. They moved fast, running perpendicular to the trail toward the river. In that moment I didn't know if they were running because they had seen or heard me, if I had spooked or upset them. I stayed so still while they disappeared down to the river. I stood there, still waiting for the other hikers to catch up to me. It was quiet for a few minutes until the stampede began again, these huge beasts running full speed in front of me and out into the plain. The other hikers were only about 5 minutes behind me. They hadn't heard the noise of the stampede. 
I caught up to another couple at the next waterhole who told me they thought they'd heard a very loud plane or something flying past. I shook my head and said nope, buffalo feet. I was glad not to see any more buffalo for the rest of the walk. It's weird to think if I had walked even 20 seconds quicker I'd have been cleaned up by a buffalo stampede. Done for. Makes a good story to tell but I never want to see another buffalo while on foot ever again. This is the story I came here for holy frick. As a boy scout and adventure crew member I have a couple of stories. When I went to Philmont there was a guy in our crew who had a blister on his foot from before we got there and it was discovered on the second day and it almost went from one left side of his foot to the other side. Luckily we were on the way to a staff camp that day where he was sent to the medical lodge and base camp. Later that trip it rained on us so hard it went through our rain gear and two people in our crew got stage 2 hypothermia when we were an 8 hour round trip away from help. One guy couldn't remember our names, where we were and what year it was. The other guy couldn't solve questions as simple as 8x10 and ended up passing out. That was me. And while most of us were asleep a flash flood came in and the water got within 5 feet of a tent. Also at Philmont one of the guys slipped on a trail that was on a cliff and almost went to the bottom. Fun times. TLDR. Someone had a huge blister. Two people got really bad hypothermia when we were hours from the nearest help. And someone almost fell off a cliff. All in one trip. I forget which summer camp it was but at one of the ones we went to, I personally didn't. Lightning struck the bench outside the mess hall and the bench exploded along with the ground under it sending dirt and pieces of bench flying into the mess hall and smashing the windows. Some people got hit with debris but nobody got seriously hurt. One night we didn't make our goal and were absolutely gassed from a long day of hiking. We set up camp at small clearing that was just off the trail. Everything was normal and the seven of us went to our various shelters. After laying there for a bit there was the sound of a plane and with every second it just kept getting louder and louder until the sound was almost ear piercingly loud. All of a sudden the tent went from pitch black to completely lit. My friend Eric was grabbing my chest through my sleeping bag and was very clearly screaming foo woo 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 while I just curled further and first into the fetal position because I was sure a plane was about to come smashing into the ground. It went past as quickly as it came. The only thing we could guess was that it was an army drill and the plane was flying as low as it possibly could through the mountain pass. Not really a horror story but on the Appalachian. We also drank water that had a huge dead salamander it. So it you see a well for spring the water with the hatch. Don't take water from the PVC tube and trust it right away. That was on Springfield in the Georgia section. My only real horror story was learning the lesson that the weather report for the nearest town does not reflect the weather at the top of the mountain where the open face shelter is. When you pack for a low in the high 40s, sleeping in single digits is rough. Also grew up in swampier parts of Florida. Wildlife can startle you. Not really scary once you know what to look listen for. A cougar makes a horrifying sound if you don't know what it is. If you are near water in nesting season. Always check for gator nests nearby. You don't want to find one while you're mid-dump. That does make a good laxative though. Ha, huh, yup, I live in a small mountain town. There is another little town 15 minutes up the road. We each have our own weather. It could be bright and sunny in my twin and pouring rain and thunderstorms or even snow in the other. Or vice versa. You never know. When I was a kid, like tenish, my parents took us on a family vacation. A week long backpacking trip through the smokers. It was mostly fine. I still look back on it fondly. But there were big millipeds everywhere and you had to be careful when packing up otherwise you'd probably roll one up in your tent or something. But the worst was I went into my sleeping bag for the night and I felt something crawling along my leg. It felt like an inchworm. It was, in fact, a bee. Somehow. Fortunately I'm not allergic. But dealing with a bee sting in my car for right before bed some 10 or 15 miles from the trailhead. Not fun. Type 1 diabetic here. Did the PCT in 2018. Mostly didn't have too many troubles. But one night, when I was a couple months into the trip, I saw a lake on the map. About two tenths of a mile off trail. Not too far off trail, but far enough where anyone walking on the trail would have no reason to stop decided to camp there for the night and I soon learned why no one else was there. The lake was entirely taken over by mosquitoes. 
I hadn't noticed until I already started setting up. I put my gloves on and my mosquito head net thing. It was mostly fine, until my blood sugar felt low, real low, like, painfully and potentially life-threateningly low. The physical symptoms of having dangerously low blood sugar are hard to describe, but it's similar to a panic attack, elevated heart rate, dizzy, irrational, and sweating. So there I am, alone, in my tent. Not only are there no people around, but there never will be, and I can practically feel my body failing me. I sat in my tent, pouring sweat down my head, stuffing gummy bears I didn't even have the saliva to chew, hoping I made it. I remember nervously rocking back and forth, realizing how alone I truly was in the world. I made it through, though. Holy heck been there. Those gummies were good I bet. OMG I can finally answer one of these. I actually went on a 6 day hiking trip on the Appalachian Trail, 50 miles in total, I was 16 at the time, on day 2, 3 miles in of a 12 mile day, 2 other guys and myself are on a very narrow and brushy part of the trail, when all of a sudden we all start getting sharp pains around our legs only to look down and see hundreds of ground hornets swarming our legs, all 3 of us burst into sprints. My pack was about 40 pounds in total which for a 16 year old twig is a lot. After running for about 30 seconds I stopped to look at the damage. They were still in my socks stinging away. I killed the remaining ones and had a panic attack because I am allergic to some kind of stinging insect but have no idea which one. And I had an epipen but was all alone on the trail as the other two had sprinted off in other directions. So I sat and calmed myself and finally decided I would keep going and try and find the rest of my group. I walked for about 5 minutes before that pain suddenly got worse and I was met with another swarm. So take 2 same crap happened again. I don't think I've ever cried as hard as I did that day. The pain was awful. My legs doubled in size. And I got severely dehydrated from vomiting. But I managed to get through it and complete the trip. Still one of the scariest experiences in my life. So me and my ex did a 36 day hike in Nepal and there was far too many horror stories haha. So first we tried going one route but a village and route had been flattened by a landslide which we crossed with the smell of rotting bodies in the sun heat. Arriving at the start the initial route got avalanche and a bunch of hikers died. We decided to reroute. Day 4 of walking we came across a village where one of the residents had been poisoning tourists and selling their clothes and only been caught that week. At one point we lost the trail and bumped into a local guy who kept saying this way but couldn't say anything else. We ended up going from 2500 meters to 5500 meters in a day. When we realized we ran down as much as we could as the sun was setting to try and not get altitude sickness. We caught Jardia from the water when we got to the highest point so we're having both altitude sickness and sulfur stomach. Also casually most locals were walking around with sword sized machetes. The last two weeks we decided to go on a non-tourist trail and ended up at a village where 70% of the people had a physical deformity we then communicated in sign language for a bed and food. As we ate it it tasted off but we hadn't eaten for 13 hours and needed something. The next day both of us exploded at least 5 times from both ends before breakfast. Knowing that there was no help and the food there would make it worse we set off and turned what should have been a 8 hour walk into 2 horrendous 13 hours days. As we came back to civilization at the end a guide told us that the people at that town had been storing their food with their fertilizer and 20 of them had died so far. It took us about a week to stop being projectile. There was so many other things that happened. Just glad to have made it through. Whoa. Amazing thank you for sharing. This isn't really a horror story, but it could have been. Maybe I was just a walk on character. Not a lot of scary things happened to me because I'm 6 feet 7 inches 250 pounds. I was setting off on a multi-day trip in Yellowstone with my wife. We were there right before the season started, so it wasn't empty, but it wasn't bonkers. If you've visited Yellowstone as a hiker, then you know about a mile down any trail you're pretty much on your own, especially a longer trail without any obvious features. We were about 2 miles in when we started seeing banana peels. Maybe one every 100-200 yards. Someone ahead of us was freaking chowing down on these things. We easily saw over a dozen. Maybe 20 or so. WTF. After a while of this we came around a turn to find a fully nude Japanese man crouched on the side of the trail. 
No gear or clothes anywhere in sight. He looked up and saw us. Our eyes locked. Then he bolted full speed off the trails and into the wilderness. Miles from civilization. Never saw him again. I have no idea where he was keeping all those bananas. My dad, who was born and raised in Wyoming and nature, is a firm believer that there are feral people in Montana's mountains. Kepler Track New Zealand did a miscalculation on the number of calories two adults needed for the four day trek. Had nothing but one jerky stick left and minimal water when we barely caught the last shuttle from the end trailhead back to Tianon an additional 14k away. Whenever I think of the hungriest I've ever been it's the last half day off that trek. When we got back to our rented room we ordered two pizzas and a dessert made of berries, ice cream, and chocolate. I cannot remember what the pizzas tasted like or even what we ordered. I only noticed the food going into my mouth at dessert. It was the most beautiful flavor I've ever experienced. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.